This is going to be a look at two players on the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. Of course, some of you guys know I've been following Trayvon Walker a lot through the first three weeks of the season, Josh Allen to a lesser extent. Big fan of Devin Lloyd. I was through the pre-draft process. Man, there's a guy playing next to him. I just love his story. Foye Oluwakin, and if I've mispronounced his name, forgive me. We're going to be generally focused on these two guys here. That's Oluwakin, number 23, on the left-hand side of the defense. Devin Lloyd on the right. This, I think this is the first play of the game. I will break down some of these plays or most of these plays. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Foye Oluwakin, if you've never heard of him. The Jags drafted Chad Muma and Devin Lloyd, and a lot of people who paid attention to the draft process are like, oh, they got two young linebackers. Four, man, I don't, Muma's not getting on the field, barring injury. Uh, Foye Oluwakin is 27 years old, went to Yale, was granted, I think was granted an extra year of eligibility after an injury in his junior year or maybe senior year. So I may have some of the details wrong there, but I do know this. He's now playing in the NFL. He made 192 tackles last year while playing for the Atlanta Falcons. 192, you heard that right. 102 of them were solo tackles. Him and Devin Lloyd last week, I think they did a great job against the Eagles. Now, the Eagles won 29-21. Some of these tackles, you know, occasionally in the NFL, you get a tackle like this one, right? The quarterback's running out of bounds. Anyway, you just tag the guy, you get a tackle. But check this out. Those two together had 30 tackles in this game. Devin Lloyd had four solos. I think Foye Iluikin had 12, I believe, 12 solo tackles in an NFL game. That's incredible. He's a guy who whose name you probably have never heard of. I'll be honest with you, I hadn't you know, heard of it in some cases um, until like when I looked up their depth chart in the preseason. So just check out some of the stuff that he's doing that I'd like to point out to you. This is Aluikin. They're going to blitz him off the edge. Why? Because they have the running back to his side, and they're anticipating a zone read. Now, luckily for them, it's not like you know an RPO where they're running the slant in behind him. But even if it is, I think they've got the safety here to defend it, and I think that's one of the things that makes this guy, Foye Aluikin, so smart. Him and Devin Lloyd next to each other, real athletic. And you see, he doesn't go on this blitz until such time that Jalen Hurts puts the ball in the running back's stomach. So this could be a read blitz whereby you say, if there's a mesh, we're, we're blitzing it off the edge. The DN to that side, I don't think I'll give you the end zone angle. Maybe I do. The DN to that side is slam and B. So it's just a gap exchange blitz. But in my opinion, Foye Lewikin is reading it. He's not running the blitz until such time as there's a mesh. If, for whatever reason, this running back released out into the flats, I don't think Foye Lewikin runs his blitz. I think he either drops in coverage or he goes and covers the running back as the coverage dictates. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I'm a huge Devin Lloyd fan, you know, but when you watch the film of these, these guys together, it's, it's hard not to be impressed by both of them. So same play, end zone angle. You can see Aluikin is right here on the right-hand side. And look, I know the Eagles screamed past them. You know, once it was, I think, 12 nothing Jags, at some point the Eagles just kind of turned it to a different level, and they made they made an adjustment, in my opinion. They went to the run game, and their offensive line is a super high-level offensive line, so they're able to execute, you know, and chew down the Jaguars' defense. But this is just brilliant stuff from a guy who – whose name most of us don't even probably know, 6'2", 230, something like that. On this film here, an inside linebacker, you know, he looks kind of small, but he gets the job done. Some of these, film, some of these plays are going to be from the end zone angle, um, you know, what looks like an RPO. I believe that most of the game, when, when Devin Lloyd had to run him back on his side, he was generally holding or even expanding away when there was a mesh. Now, in my opinion, I'm not sure if I give you all 22 angle on this one. In my opinion, the nickel defender must be off screen here to our left. And that's the reason why on this mesh with the quarterback, Devin Lloyd is going to go ahead and play the run along with Aluikin. I think Devin Lloyd could be a rookie of the year candidate for defensive rookie of the year. And I think Foye Aluikin, like if he makes 192 tackles this year, 102 of them solo again, and he's not talked about for like all pro or Pro Bowl, well, they're not having a Pro Bowl, all those things. Like, that's just ridiculous. You know, he played in Atlanta last year. I know they had a bad season, but good football good football shows up on film. You can see it immediately. It took me about probably 10 or 12 plays of watching it before I was like, oh, my God, who is number 23? I was watching this to check out Devin Lloyd, you know. One of the things about Lloyd that I think is special is his ability to play against the pass. In man or zone, the guy seems to be in the right spot. I mean – in the pre-draft process, I can't show you the video to prove it because it was on another YouTube channel that's since been deleted. But I talked about his pass coverage skills, but even this, I didn't think they were this good. I didn't think his pass coverage skills were such that he had 
incredible awareness of the routes developing behind him, you know, or excuse me, to the net, to the outside of him, to the right of him on our screen while he's looking at the quarterback. As soon as the quarterback pulls the pin on the grenade, he takes off, breaks on the ball. Him in the corner looks like it could be covered to cover two over there. You know, make the tackle for a short game. These two guys put on a show, man. They put on a show. I love their game. Same play, end zone angle. You can see that's Devonta Smith running a little out. And Devin Lloyd is able to get out here. Once the ball is thrown and completed, Devin Lloyd is able to make contact, you know, about a split second after the ball is completed to the bottom of the numbers. That's another thing I talked about in a film study I did on him last week, last week is the range. You know, range is sometimes an overused word. You, can't, you know, because sometimes a guy will show you great range, but it's still like a 10 or 12 yard gain. But in this case, it's great range on the, you know, on a pass play, second and 10, as you can tell up top. And he, he helps the corner, you know, prevent this from being a bigger gain. It ends up being like a five yard gain. All 22 angle. Hope you guys don't mind me switching back and forth, you know, between the angles. Great awareness by Lewican and Devin Lloyd. This on this screen. Watch Devin Lloyd. You know, get something triggers him here. Post snap. He's probably reading the back, is my guess. And then watch Aluakin redirect. The, the combination of the two, they're very intelligent. Like, you can see, you know, all football players in the NFL are smart, okay? They all are smart. But what there's, diff, there's levels to it, all right? What the Jags are doing over here, it looks like this one D end, Arden Key is dropping out. And so they're, they're, sl they're slinging the coverage. So sling like a slingshot. And then, so every, it's just trickle down or trickle up effect to me, it looks like. And then as the back releases to this side, it looks like a Lewican's going with him and then at one point decides to attack. So they're just slinging the coverage over there to number 16 side and dropping the safety down to the, to the back side. Arden Keys dropping back, Devin Lloyd slinging over, a Lewican is going this way. And then, so you've got to drop down to the curl flat by what looks like a boundary side strong safety. Makes sense because you got A.J. Brown back here, I believe. And one of his biggest routes this year has been the slant because he's a big body, big target. And then Aluakin makes the tackle for loss. I'm not sure how many tackle for losses he had, but when I was looking at the, the stats, um, and I like to look at the play-by-play, -play, it looked like to me he had like four or five of them. QB sneak, I think the Eagles did convert this, I believe. This is later on in the game. Watch the passion by Devin Lloyd. He's like jumping up in the air on top of the pile. You know, whether that's going to stop the play or not, I'm not sure. It looked like maybe the Eagles caught him with um, certain personnel on the field because it looks like to me they're an 11 personnel. I believe this is three receivers right here and a running back. So it looks like there's a short yardage situation and they've caught the Jags with maybe their nickel defense on the field. So they're, you know, incapable or, or low percent chance of them to actually stop a quarterback sneak. Uh, this is one of the main Eagles formations that you saw in 2021. You know, ace gun or ace pistol. So you got 12 personnel, I believe. A lot of teams are using fullbacks as one of these guys. So this could be 21 personnel, one of them being a fullback. But I don't think so. At least from the offense I saw last year with the Eagles, it was usually two tight ends. And they love the RPO stuff. So they love the back coming here. Jalen Hurts opening to this side. One tight end running out to the flats and then sometimes turning this into a wheel. And then the backside H-back or tight end you know, slipping out into the flats as a late option if Jalen Hurts keeps it. So it's like a quadruple option in some ways. In this case, it's direct fire, meaning direct flow, everyone working to the offense's right, defense's left. Here's a Lewican. Watch his helmet. I'll pull this back in a second. You can see it. Watch his helmet. He, he triggers something. He sees something. He sees something right now and then turns his helmet to look at the, the tight end. I'm not sure if that's Goddard or who that is, to be honest with you. But and he heads up inside of the stretch play. They go get Devin Lloyd. I think that's Kelsey. And then Lewican fits this perfect. This is a special player, in my opinion. Maybe, I don't know, you know, I think that the 40 time at the draft process was slower. I don't remember the number. I want to say 474, maybe even 484. I don't, I don't know. I'm certainly not trying to be disrespectful. I'm using this to illustrate to you, like, 40 doesn't mean anything sometimes when you've got guys that have special ability. This looks like a person at 27 years old who knows exactly what he's supposed to do in every situation. I'm a huge fan of Devin Lloyd. I'm becoming a huge fan of Foyer, a Lewican, in case you can't tell. Seems like a gem to me. <clears throat> I 
Again, we're focusing on the two inside linebackers for the Jags. You know, if you notice other elements that I missed of certain plays, you know, of course, go right ahead, point them out in the uh, comment section. Devin Lloyd getting off the block by uh, the backside tackle. Can't get to him. You know, it looks like a you got a mesh here between Hertz and the running back. This backside tackle, which is Lane Johnson, is trying to work up to Lloyd. Just doesn't have the leverage to do so, obviously. Lloyd's very patient, stays square. And then once the ball is committed, he has the athletic ability to come forward, make the tackle. You know, he's small, too, in, in terms of being compared to other NFL inside linebackers. I think they both go about 230. I thought Lloyd was about 235 at Utah last year. All right, RPO-type look. Because you got a slant being run by Brown. You know, what looks like a wheel developing by number two. Watch what they're doing with Trayvon Walker. They're, they got him apexed out near the number two inside leverage, and then he's going to run down the line at some point. So what they're doing is I think they're trying to obscure the read. Jalen Hurst not going to be reading him when he's this far, this far out, in my opinion. Uh, they, they're trying to obscure the read. Yeah, because it looks like at this point, Jalen Hurst's face mask is looking at Devin Lloyd. Normally, Trayvon Walker would be over here, like his feet would be you know, there and there. And so he would be the read man. This case looks like an RPO to me. They're cutting Trayvon Walker. Devin Lloyd is sitting right there on the backside because you got all the zone, all the zone concept working this way. And then when Sanders, I think that Sanders cuts it back, Devin Lloyd is sitting right there, nice and patient. They got something interesting happening in Jacksonville, man. I like I like the defense. I try to sit, I try to right now what I'm doing is besides watching a shit ton of Ravens film, because I'm a Ravens fan, I'm trying to give myself a certain number of hours a week to watch certain teams. Uh, the Bengals, Steelers, and Browns obviously are high on that because the Ravens, Ravens are going to play them twice each this year. But uh, the Jags number is growing every week. All right, so here is, I think that's Lloyd up to the top side. No, I'm wrong. That's a Lewican. Watch how patient he's being on this. Again, what looks like a read. You could have a bubble developing up top here you know, with guys blocking. So if a Lewican was to just take off running for the run play, it becomes a three-on-two in the Eagles' favor. So he's the third guy. He kind of has to freeze and sit. The concept and the design of it from the Eagles' standpoint is awesome. In this case, Jalen Hurts keeps it, and it's Trayvon Walker versus Jalen Hurts, and he's able to make him miss. That tells you how, hell of, how good of an athlete Jalen Hurts is. Also, Devin Lloyd is able to play the front side of this run play. And then he's got great eyes, man. Once he sees Hurts keep the football, he's able to redirect back here to the inside. Once Walker misses the tackle, then Devin Lloyd's there to clean it up. Let me know if you guys are as impressed with these two as I am. I mean, Devin Lloyd's obviously young. He's a rookie. Lewican has been in the NFL since, I think, 18, 2018, I believe. There's the same play from the end zone angle. Try to track Devin Lloyd if you can, just so you can see the way he moves. I think he's one of those guys that – he knows when to go slow, and he knows when to explode. And he looks smooth in everything he does. Like, nothing looks labored with Devin Lloyd. I don't know if you guys know, he's got two interceptions this year. I think he's got a fumble recovery as well. Great pass coverage skills. Obviously making a lot of tackles. Only had four solo in this game. That looks like one of them to me. Him and Aluakin, man, they, they, seem like, they seem like they work well together. And that's one of the things about uh, inside linebacker, where you've got to work with your partner. You've got to work with your tandem. It's got to be a situation where you know how the other guy's going to fit, so you're going to fit it you know, properly. In this case, you're the front side, inside linebacker. You're fitting B-gap, and you trust your tandem. You trust your other guys. Those guys are special to me, man. I'm, I'm a big fan. You know, If you're a Jags fan, you're watching this video, let me know what you think of my film breakdown. There might be some elements that I missed because you know I don't cover this team a lot like I do the Ravens, but I'm trying to watch. I gave myself an hour a week to watch Jags film. Um, and right, you know, this week is probably going to be a little more because I'd like to go back and see specifically some of the things they did. I, I watched enough to know that I think the Jags were trying to take away the pass element on the RPO replays. They were trying to give Jalen Hurts multiple reads at times, maybe get uh, create a little bit of hesitation in his mind. And I think they have the athletic ability and explosiveness to kind of take people by surprise early in games. Seems like that's what they did. So let me know what you think of the film study. Uh, my film study, if you think there's missing elements, that's on me. But there's certainly no missing elements, you know, when you're talking about these two guys here. So let me know how highly you rate or you think about Devin Lloyd and Foyer Lewican. 
two different stories because you got an instant star in Devin Lloyd, first round draft pick. And then Aluikin seems like a guy who's had to build his way up. I don't think he started many games at all for the Falcons until 2020. I think he started 14 games in 2020, and I believe he started all 17 games last year, 192 tackles, 102 solo, and I think he had three picks last year as well. That's special numbers, and when you watch the film, I think you see a special player. Let me know what you guys think of this film breakdown in the comments section.